welcome to Child's View. Once again, I'm here with my colleagues, Becky Roth and Bernadette Towns. Today's topic is pets in the classroom. And so we are really focusing in on those classroom teachers. One of the things that we know about pets is that they um, help develop all of the domains of a child. Mm -hmm. The physical do domain, uh, cognitive, social, and emotional domains of children. And how do they do that? Just by being pets. <laughs> so over the years, I've had a number of pets in my classroom. I'm going to tell you, um, I've had a virtual petting zoo. Virtual? Um, <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> oh, so <clears throat> I have had, I have had um, guinea pigs and rats. Wow. And I've had reptiles. reptiles. And oh, I've had a a large bird. And, and yes, I know all of these things can can cause issues, uh, salmonella, you know, all of those dander issues with children, but I've never had a child hurt by a pet, and I've, but I've had a pet hurt by a child. Oh. Totally by accident, mm -hmm. but um, I've had rabbits in my classroom, um, and, and this, is what, this is what we have found, and research finds it too. When you introduce a new pet to a classroom, children are more likely to listen to instructions and follow directions mm. because they want to have access to that. Yeah. And so it's it was really fun always to inter reintroduce a new, a new pet because mm. we would talk about it days before it came and then the pet arrives. Ah, and nice. so it also, socially and emotionally, um, just by stroking that or, or holding that animal, emotionally again just like touch we talked right. about when yeah, we talked about thing. touch yeah. just like touch wow. so yeah. I well, think know. of all the therapy dogs right yes therapy animals and emotional support animals it's right because we know they reduce stress right mm -hmm. um that it can be a companion for a child that really simply just loves you right but i know that mm -hmm. there are good choices for the classroom and there are not so good choices for the classroom right absolutely mm -hmm. there are um and again, it has to do with whatever center you're in and your school district, yes. what they will allow. I was lucky that all of the classrooms that I worked in were private schools. Mm -hmm. And then my, when I was a director of a program, um, I was able to do that because I put the parameters on there. Nice. But there's, there's a couple of things that you look at. One is, what's the likelihood of that animal going to bite the child? Mm, okay. So I'm going to tell you, don't get a hamster <laughs> for your classroom because... Rats are better. Rats are better. <laughs> um, <laughs> hamsters, hamsters are nocturnal, yeah. so when a child wants to wake them up, oftentimes they're grouchy. Oh. Yeah. And they'll bite. I'm sleeping. Oh. So I'm going to tell you a little funny story about that because you don't ever, ever bite the hand that feeds you, ever. <laughs> Okay, so I got this hamster. This parent came in and she said, uh, we have this hamster at home and, and we don't want it anymore. And it'll go right here with your classroom. I said, yeah, bring it in. Yay. She says, I have this huge big hammer trail. I said, okay, cool. Really? And it was, it was like, it was like, I don't know. It was Does like a monorail for this thing. It went all over the room. And so it's here and it's, and it's sitting. And I said, now does your... Does your little guy play with it? Does he handle it? Is it handleable? Because I, I know hamsters are notorious for biting. Oh yeah, he just got tired of feeding it. Okay, well he's five. He got tired of feeding it? I'm not sure about that one. So I said, okay. So first day she brought it in, we have it in the, the habit trail, and you never touch an animal when they're first brought in because eh, the right. noise of the room, it's a little stressful right. for mm. us. So this was like a Friday and and over, you know I fed him and over the weekend, I, I checked on him over the weekend and then Monday I come in and of course little Herbert Hamster is asleep in his den. So I just, I'm just gonna reach right in and, and get his little dish and get it out and give him more food. And I reached in and it was, ah! it was like, jeez, oh, Louise. And so this was an acceptable behavior and you probably need to cut this out. But I took the big tongs from the math area and I picked him up. And I also at the time had a snake in the classroom who happened to be hungry. Uh oh. <laughs> Dropped him in. Don't ever uh, bite the hand that feeds you. Uh, ever. So if it's not safe for me, it's, it's not, not safe, safe for, for the, the kids. Yeah. No. You also have to, I always put out um, a letter in my classroom 
these are the animals I typically have. Nice. Mm -hmm. well, that's Do good. any of your children have allergic or uh, would have an allergic these, reaction yeah. to maybe even dander yeah, yeah. certain fears even. yeah or certain fears. Fears. And, experience and then my animals were always checked by a vet mm -hmm. so i always had certifications of the vet nice yeah. but um you you just talked about fears my we i also had a dog in the classroom oh. because my daughter and i raise um, guide dogs for the blind right. And so I had a kindergartner in my classroom who was definitely afraid of dogs. Mm. And so I had a Solo in his crate. I had a place in his crate for a crate in my classroom for him to go in. Just but he needed to be with us for socialization. Mm. And the first day I thought she was going to nut up. She just had just this anxiety thing and it was okay. Yeah. Uh, about the second week she was walking in. She was walking wow. nice. because awesome. it just brought it down. Yeah. We were able to introduce it safely, and um, she was able to, to overcome that That's fear. So neat. Yeah. And well, so it was a really different fun. relationship yeah. with a different dog, yeah. right? Yeah. So, um, so yeah. Becky visited my classroom mm -hmm. um, back before <laughs> she, well, while she was still in school. Yes. And um, actually, <laughs> she had she. Ago. Every year, I had a toad and frog contest jumping contest and I would invite the fathers because it was an engaging time for uh -huh. the parents. And so the dads would collect the little yard toads and I would go out and I'd, and I'd catch the biggest bullfrog I could wow. catch. And so we'd bring them into the classroom and we'd have them there for a while and then we'd have this little big, um, yeah, this little race. But race. she came in once and a little girl is holding this little bullfrog like this oh, and its legs are like down this. Down. Like, oh! That's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, but, you know, when I taught third grade, I had a little um, uh, rabbit. Oh, okay. And um, the kids would take turns taking them home, taking mm -hmm. it home on the weekend. Weekends. If their parents were okay with it, I'd send them home with food and they kept it, kept it in it. I saw that it also taught responsibility and, right. and nice. teaching them how to care yeah. for something outside of themselves. That's correct. And, you know, at third grade, they're eight, so they're a little bit older and a little bit more capable right. than yeah. maybe a four-year-old. Well, and your so. parents obviously agreed. Right. And no. in my preschool classrooms, the children had pet duty. Ah. So they got to feed the fish, they got mm -hmm. to feed the, the rats, they got to feed those mm -hmm. um, animals and it became part of the daily routine but to teach them responsibility that that yeah. little animal is, is relying on you to take care of them. Yes. The other thing it teaches is about nature. Oh, yeah. Also that, that little social thing, many children don't have access to any pets at home. Yeah. Right. And so now they're getting that benefit of, of seeing mm -hmm. how a pet works, what a pet does. Right. Well, it had to be gentle. It had to be gentle yeah. and kind. That was always yeah. a tough one, right? Yeah. I mean, guinea pigs are a little bit bigger, so they can be more durable. So I've seen guinea pigs mm -hmm. in the classroom as well. Although one of my teachers, um, our teachers, our three-year-old teacher had a rat. And the rat had babies, and that's how we ended up with a rat at our house. Wow. But best pet ever, so. So, they Sharon, are, mm -hmm. the, does the state have any reg regulations with pets, or do they leave it up to the center? We're not supposed to have, like, those little bitty um, water turtles, because they oh. really do carry. And, and most reptiles can carry um, you know, some diseases that you don't want. Salmonella is one of them, okay. especially if you have an aquatic one. Okay. But um, my state analyst was in my classroom in my center all the time. And I yeah, had I, I had a breeding colony of chinchillas. Wow. I had some reptiles that they that they were yeah. um, you know had access yeah. to. I have tarantulas. I have. Mm. She had a whole reptile room. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sing cockroaches. Wow. Um, you know, <laughs> just everything that you could possibly imagine to give those children the experience. Um, did I make them touch them? No. no. Did I make them feed them? No. But I'm going to tell you, when this is the other thing. Children get their fears from us. Oh yeah. It's true. So, so you if you're smile. afraid of oh, something. Oh, you want to touch the tarantula? Okay. So, okay, well, so okay, here. Barbie. Let me tell you. <laughs> let me tell you one last story. I had a 2-year-old and I had she was holding a tarantula. Oh. And I hope I, I wish I could find that picture, but she's holding it like this and her eyes are this big and she's smiling and she is so happy. She's like and mom walks in and mom goes ah! 
and boom, she threw that tarantula across the room and hit the wall. Oh, no. And it was just like, but she was then instantly afraid. Right. But because I was standing there holding it with her, she wasn't. Right. So when I introduce pets, especially especially things fragile. like um, fragile pets, uh, yeah. stick bugs, uh, hissing cockroaches, those things. Yeah. I do it in a special way with children. Can I have your hand? Uh -huh. Can I have your hand? Uh -huh. So what I will do with the children is I will ha hold it first and then hold their hand right here and then put my hand and say, when you're ready, and then I'll do this. When you're ready to look, let me know. Oh. Are you ready? Uh -huh. And uh -huh. then you can look. <laughs> and then can I take my hand away? Uh -huh. So if they if they get here and they say no, yeah. then we don't do that. Oh, okay. We don't do that. Mm -hmm. But it's nice. teaching them. Because we want to reduce the number going that yes. way. Yes. Yeah. We want to <laughs> teach them respect, yeah. but we also want to teach them safety for themselves. Right. Knowing their parameters. Right. And then... Um, well, we teach just, them respect if we're respecting them. Right. And yeah. that's a matter of respecting right. their fears and right. concerns and interests. Right. So... Right. so um, nice. I've done everything from hatching chickens in our in our classrooms to ducks. Wow. Um, I've had bunnies that were potty trained, went back to their cage. They would jump around. It was the cutest thing. They would jump and he would button would jump and sit in in a kid's lap for story. And then when wow. he got finished with the kids, he'd just jump back and go back in his cage. And the rule of the classroom was if if button was in his cage, we he needed his there. space. Yeah. Nice. Like you have your privacy area button has okay. his and so it taught a lot of nice. fundamental skills. fundamental skills, skills that children yeah. need that's awesome so to recap pets in the classroom are very important you always must check with your center or your district to see what you are allowed to have even fish are great pets in the classroom teaching responsibility teaching language teaching science teaching math mm -hmm and teaching those social skills. Thank you once again for joining us on The View. We hope we see you next time.